for the uh, multi-low occupant apartments and for the short-term rentals. And I am going to call on Sally Miller to uh, try to explain this section. Thanks, Sally. Yep, no problem. Um, so I think the first item that is on there is the proposed change to um, residential office section 521. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that is a request that came from Mike Willis, who has property on 2748 East Woodstock Road. He currently has an office and two apartments in that area. And so he would like to, he's requested that we change the zoning um, to allow him to change that office to an apartment. And we have currently have a section 521 in the zoning regulations, which is multiple low occupancy apartments, which allows um, a total of four bedrooms and three units. And we allow that in certain districts right now, and unfortunately I didn't do all my research, um, but not residential office. So he's asking that we include that in the residential office district. And right now, the only parcels that is zoned residential office are those in Tassville that are right adjacent to that, to his parcel. So this, the Planning Commission thought that this was a good idea. We're always looking for ways to add some housing um, to our housing stock in this community, and that just seems a very easy way to do it. Sally, would that only be for that area? Yes. And uh, let me look it up right now. What would the possibility be for other areas for yeah. is it possible or would we have to consider any request that came in for that do you, are there other places in the town where you can see this being a possibility it's so it, it, in our zoning regulation section 521 of the town it allows up to four low occupancy apartments for a total cumulative six bedrooms may be per permitted within, and these are the districts it's already permitted, is in the commercial light industrial, light commercial light industrial, and business service light industrial. So we already have it in those zones, and it's allowed in those zones. So this would be all the residential office? Right, and the okay. only ones that we currently have are, I think it's eight, eight parcels in Tassville okay. that are right along Route 4. So okay. those are the only ones that are Thank working. You. So I'll propose a motion to accept this. Motion has been made and Second. seconded to accept this. Any further discussion from the board? Any comments from the public? All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. So moved. Okay. Okay. Okay, and the second item that you have on your agenda is um, the addition of or actually the deletion of the exemption for short-term rentals in residential five-acre and forestry districts. So currently in our section 526 short-term rentals in the town zoning, we do not require permits for residential five-acre and forestry districts. Um, in this conversation, the, the Planning Commission has been working on having conversations about short-term rentals for many months now. And in that, we hadn't really realized that we no longer, we didn't require permits for these areas. So when people are asking us, well, how many short-term rentals do you have in this community? We can't even tell them because five acre and forestry exempt, they don't require permits. We don't know whether they exist or not. They are operating as businesses, they don't require a permit. So we voted to exclude that from 526. So we're taking out the exemption for those areas. And for folks that are interested in short-term rentals, what this will allow is a it will require a conditional use permit for short-term rentals throughout the town. So it levels the playing field for everyone. And it allows neighbors to weigh in on any sort of zoning, so on the permit. So that if you are an abutter to a proposed short-term rental, you will have the opportunity to say something. Short-term rentals are limited to 10 times the calendar year. Now, we realize that that is a, a small number, but part of the conversations of short-term rentals is to decide how many times a year this should happen. But again, conditional use requires people <coughs> to get this permit, and the permit then reviews parking, it reviews the trash situation, it um, provides 
um, sort of the, you have to require a notice of the renters of the house, it has to have a, know where your property manager is and all that information that is not required right now. We don't know if people are doing this or not because we have no way to know. And then the occupancy is restricted to two people per bedroom with a maximum of six people per household. And will you explain how this affects this? Um, yeah, not quite done. Okay. So let me just keep going. So it prohibits weddings, parties, outdoor catered events, signs, and other outdoor indications that the dwelling is used as a short-term rental are not allowed, and outdoor activities between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. are not are prohibited. So that is a general prohibition. And then also a report is supposed to be filed by the permit holder with the Planning and Zoning Office at the end of January of each year. So the people are required to report how often they have actually done their short-term rentals. Um, you had a question. Will you explain how this affects um, properties that already have short-term rentals on them? Yes, so anybody who currently has a short-term rental is not affected at all. Those prop by Vermont state law, those properties are grandfathered. And so if people are operating a short-term rental in those areas, they will not be affected at all. And will you explain how this fits in with the hearing on June the 27th? So um, the Planning Commission made this recommendation or made <coughs> voted on this back in March. So we've been talking about this a lot longer. The <coughs> study I think brought up the idea of a moratorium about two weeks ago. We're hoping that we will get some information from the moratorium, the Planning Commission indicated at their last meeting they did not support a moratorium. They would rather see that the zoning go through the Planning Commission, who is really the entity that writes planning and zoning ordinances. And that's what they do. And so we're doing the research to try to make it work and figure it all out. And this was an easy way for us to sort of at least bring all the properties in this community into alignment. So what will happen if this, if um, we pass these tonight and then we have a meeting on June the 27th and the select board decides that there is an issue and we should have a short-term interim regulation that says no new permits for three months, <laughs> then what will happen? No new permits for three months. So we might pass something tonight that says anything new in the next month needs a permit and then yep. there'll be a, yep. then nobody can get one for three months. Right, right. No. But if you don't pass it, the moratorium, then, and you don't pass this tonight, we're back to the fact that five acre and forestry zones do not require a permit. And we're back to the situation where we don't, we don't even know who's out there. And it will just continue. What is the moratorium during that three months? What's going to happen that we're going to um, find out who has these businesses? No. no so we, we never will know. So the moratorium, in effect, is... No, the Planning Commission intends to keep working on this. This is this is Be just, just a minute, this is yes. just an opportunity for us, as, as many people in this audience know, we have been talking about this regularly and we're trying to get it to, to work. It is not an easy issue. We're hearing, you know, from both sides where people who have short term rentals want to have more and the people who are abutters who are not as well represented are having complaints about noise and neighbors and, and not really knowing what's going on. <coughs> and then the planning and zoning office who has no idea what's going on in those areas. So, so we're trying to gather all the information we can and make it work that balance of what's good for the community, what's good for the neighbors, what's good for the short-term rental. Question, I have a question over here, please. Now, just for clarification, <coughs> it was just Could mentioned. You, uh, Sorry. My name is Derek DeMoss. I'm a resident in town, a short-term rental owner, and a long-term uh, property rental owner. Um, just want to get clarification, Sally. You just mentioned that the moratorium would be for three months. I know there's talk of it would be three years. Is that a change, or is... I, the, excuse me. I'm just going to clarify this, though. The moratorium is not coming from the planning commission. Oh, you, so I don't that, know. That I know. I, I, I'm just saying the, the, so the verbiage. That yeah. Okay, Joking so there is a legal allowance to have that for a long time, but we would never impose something for that long, and our intention was only to impose a short-term moratorium while the regulations are revised so that we do not lose any more properties to short-term rentals. Okay, yeah, I was, just, I was curious, because originally it was a two-year with up to three years, and I just wanted to see if there was a... a the way the rules are written, it is, uh, I, it's, it's, it's a long time, but we don't have that intention. Okay, thank you. I have another question over here. I, Could you state your name, sir? Joe Di Natale. Um, I'm, I'm curious, I didn't hear, maybe I missed it. 
is anybody anybody who owns these properties are they required to live there or not? They're not. In other words, somebody from Nebraska can buy the house and rent it out. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think that has to be looked at. Yeah, it is. And and the other thing I will add is that um, we wrote our initial short-term rental ordinance in 2002. And I know a lot of people have heard this before. Um, Airbnb didn't start until 2008. So we had no idea when we wrote these ordinances originally <coughs> that there was going to be this explosion of short-term rentals and how prevalent it would be in our community. So, so we haven't had the opportunity to really investigate it fully to understand what all the implications are, but we're, we're, we're finding it out. Question? So uh, we live next to an Airbnb and Could have a name? Susie. And um, we never have any trouble with it whatsoever. Um, in fact, we rented that Airbnb several times and then decided to move uh, by a house next to that Airbnb. I've just never had any trouble. Are there community complaints about noise and parties and things yes. like that? Yes, there are. There are? Um, the, the issues that are, are coming from different people are complaints from neighbors, complaints from the fire department that um, the uh, this, the properties are not up to, to any code. Um, complaints that people arrive on a Friday and there's no property manager, so they call the fire department for help. Um, kind of nuisancey things. And then the other big thing is that the number of properties that are bec uh, going into the short-term rental market and uh, then are not available for full-time residents is increasing very rapidly. So that's something we as a community need to look at. <coughs> Question back there, please. Hi, I'm Brenda Blakeman. Um, so basically what I'm gathering you to say is that um, what the big problem is is that people are buying short-term, are, are buying houses to use for short-term rental, and you feel that they're not available for people to purchase for long-term. Is that correct? Well, there are examples of houses that have been taken out of the marketplace to be bought just for short-term rental. Um, by investors in different who don't even live here. So we're wondering as a community, do, how many houses do we want in the community to be short-term rentals? How many would we like to be full-time residents? So I think it's a free country and anybody can buy a house. Mm -hmm. And that's your and, opinion. And, and, and so one. what people do with their homes is really kind of their choice. And, and that's fine. So and why should you control that? I have a, so my personal opinion is that I have a position of some responsibility and I actually believe that we do have some responsibility to regulate, if we can, how many people live in our, how many homes are, are livable in our community. So did you look at the green and see how many homes there are on the green yeah. that have no one there full time? I did. And, okay. that's what, and that's what fuels this because actually you can't do anything about second term, second home rent, homeless. So it seems like the problem is really, the, 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 the problem seems like it's not really with short-term homeowners. It seems like the problem is available housing at a low cost for people to be able to live here. I agree. And the Which short -term is two is, different problems. No, it's the same one. One is exacerbating the other. Are you sure? Do you I have facts too? The, housing, the housing study supported that. Okay, yes. I have a question here. Yeah, Mary McClay, got the property owner in South Woodstock, and we have a, um, uh, a big farmhouse, and we, we do short-term rental in one of the apartments. Actually, we've been doing it for over 20 years. Um, and my grandmother used to actually rent out the apartment back in when there was a photography school in town uh, back in the 50s. Uh, but I, I was going to speak to the same um, thing that uh, we, in our, on our road, there are many houses where there's nobody there 95% of the time. You know, just, just vacant, you know, just third homes, fourth homes, whatever. And um, those, those properties are not properties that are going to be rented for long term. I, I, I think that I would rather have if a few of them come up and are rented for short term, that to me is better than, you know, not than having them sit there. It's, it's sometimes it feels like a ghost, ghost town, you know, and so I, I think it brings people to the area and, and some people may, I think it's good, it's, it's a win, it's a win-win to have folks coming. Um, 
So I, 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 one thing that I've experienced. Could we uh, get back to state your names, please? Oh, sorry. Uh, Alina Wilson, uh, private citizen and Tangle um, director. So when we do big shows, we end up having to go find housing. Um, and I will say that it's much easier to find housing when the actual property owner lives here. And I think there's a real difference between, um, like my in-laws love going to Brenda's place, um, but we were at the Baller's house and the owner was in Dubai. So I, I, I think there's a little bit of gray in that if the owner of the property is here, Mary, looking at her, they're taking care of it, they're watching it. Um, and I think that is, I, I think that we want to, we're all struggling here in this town. And, and so when we can fill our homes or apartments um, and we're living here, that's great. My problem with the VRBO thing is the absentee land, you know, the absentee person that owns it. It's sort of like, you know, Ken Sturm and Bentley's. That's where I have a problem. So I, I don't think you can say, you can just say no altogether. I think you should pay attention to the locals that are trying to hold on to their properties and, and make money on them and keep them, you know, full. So, so to be clear, the discussion this evening is not about short-term regulations and how they should be changed or not. Um, that is a discussion that we're having on June the 27th and when we welcome all of these views. Oh, great. Okay. The discussion tonight is whether we adopt these regulations for five plus zoning acre. Sorry. So, uh, <laughs> wait, uh, I have a question in the back. He was next. Well, I, I think Joe just, my point was I'm a business owner. I'm Patrick Fultz. I'm a business owner here. And uh, one of the issues I run into is employees. And most of the employees that we hire, they're driving 40 minutes or longer because they can't afford to live here in Woodstock. And it becomes a huge issue for us to try to find help. I've got a help wanted sign in front of my building now for a month. Uh, and I've had two people walk in and that's it. And all those people were coming from almost an hour away. So there's an issue with housing in Woodstock that we need to think about. Uh, and and that's, I think that's the bigger issue. Whether it's short term, long term, whatever, we need to start thinking about people coming here to Woodstock, buying up homes to basically run a short-term rental business. And they're not necessarily here, and then that income, it's not staying in Woodstock, it's going to wherever these people live, to their sec to their first homes. So there's just some thoughts that we need to think about that's not as simple as, as that. Uh, wait a minute, we're still over here. Who had their hand up back there? Please. Yeah, I just want to, Bridget to Ambrose, I just want to say, like, as far as the owner being on site, it's not like if you if the pe person runs it as a business, a good business, a, a well-run business, the business owner, the person does not need to be on site. There are so many ways to prepare the person that arrives to have a proper arrival and to not have issues where they need to call the emergency, uh, the fire department for help. There's ways to prepare the guest to arrive. Mm -hmm. And if the person owner is n if the owner is not prepared for that, they should be dinged. As easy as that. Like it's a business. If they run it as a business, it should be a good business. Yeah. Well, I they they came in oh, like Joe. <laughs> when Jody Natalia again. When uh, I moved here with my family, Anna went through the uh, my daughter Anna here went through the elementary school. There were 350 kids in that elementary school. I joined the EDC, Economic Development Commission, because I was concerned about that number, because now we have about 175, almost half. It doesn't appear to me that allowing homes that can be bought at a moderate price uh, and used as businesses will address the issue of families coming in here with children or having families and becoming a permanent member of the community. Um, the short-term rental concept, I don't think, addresses that problem. And I think it is a problem. Okay, uh, I have a question back here. They haven't spoken. Anybody who hasn't had okay. a chance to speak? <laughs> 
Me? You okay, yeah, Maureen O'Leary, 9 River Street. So um, I have a story and then I have a question. So I just did a short-term rental for my family for Dartmouth graduation. The first thing they did was go to the inn for drink and dinner. And then the second thing they did the next day was go shopping downtown and spend oodles of money. My question is, um, for the, the, the uh, moratorium, what are you hoping to achieve? Can I answer that one? Yeah. Um, we're hoping to achieve a period of time where we can discuss what the best short-term regulations would be for this community and listen to all sides of the argument and then make new short-term regulations and during those few months that we do that, not lose any more houses to short-term rentals before we put in place new regulations. And those new regulations may, may be different, they may be the same. But you have to have a peer. We just thought that you have to have a period <coughs> when you can discuss it. You're next. Uh, Brenda Blakeman. Um, once again, uh, pertaining to Patrick's um, comment that he made earlier, <coughs> Lawrence Rockefeller years ago realized that we had a housing problem, which is why he purchased houses for his staff to stay in. So this is not really a new problem. It's an <coughs> existing problem. We live in a community that unfortunately is very high priced. So affordable housing, I mean, people live in Bridgewater, people live in Gaysville, people live in Bethel, and they do travel because A, housing is, is in a price range that they can afford, especially when they're working for $12 an hour. They can't afford to live around here. So, you know, it's, it's the price that you pay for help and it's also the fact that people can't afford to live here unless they work really hard and make a great living. But it's not a new problem. It's been this way for years and years and years. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, so. Okay, I can call this to a Charlotte has been waiting. She's a rebel lady over here who's just anxious. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, um, Charlotte Hollingsworth. I have the hard Morian. And I don't have a problem with the short term, but. Um, at the more, because nothing has been mentioned here yet, and maybe that's going to be on your moratorium about regulations. As far as all I would ask is that they um, have to do the same things that an inn would do as far as the health department shows up, you are light, you have the fire department come. Um, because the name of Vermont will go in the toilet if these places are like substandard. Um, Vermont really stands for something, the name. And I would just hate, that's what, what concerns me. Um, not everybody is at the same level. And I think the level, the playing field needs to be the same. And also the taxes paying rooms and meals taxes okay. because the state of Vermont otherwise is missing out and I think that really needs to be uh, mandatory. Okay, I appreciate all the comments. I'd like to get back to the purpose of why yep. we're here yep. and uh, there's one gentleman back here that's been eager. If anybody's got anything new to have and hasn't spoke, we'll hear them and we need to move on. Um, Akaya Pickett, I live in South Woodstock. Just to speak to the to the um, pricing of housing and, and, and you know lower priced houses, there's three houses that are sitting in South Woodstock that are under $200,000 and they've been sitting on the market for months. So it, it doesn't seem to make sense that there's this unavailability of you know fair priced housing, which I think under 200,000 or around 200,000 is pretty fair. And they've been sitting there. So. It, there seems to be a disconnect. It's not as simple as it's a two hundred thousand dollar house. It's a two hundred thousand dollar house. How much work does it need to have to get? Yeah. So, so, so what? what it's money. It's money. It is. All right. Over a little. Yeah. I'm going to call on Sally to try to wrap this up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to remind the select board that the issue on the table tonight is nothing to do with the moratorium. It's just just removing the exemption for the five acre and forest street in an attempt to level the playing field. And I will say that in the short term rental ordinances, it does say that the owners have a responsibility to comply with the Vermont Department of Taxes. Yes. So, so those are in the regulations. Again, five acre forest street, 
are required to do any of that right now. So that's all we're asking. And you want to remove that exemption. We want to remove the exemption. Which means that everyone will then have to apply for a conditional no. use permit. Not if you're grandfathered. Not if you're grandfathered. Not if you're no, grandfathered. No, grandfather. new, new short-term rental. And at the time of a transfer of property to a new owner. There, just a minute. Uh, well, I, what's happening? I, you'll have to check with Michael, but I believe that right now, the way it's written, that that transfers with the, pro okay, with the property. Is. But no, I am you have not to apply for a new permit. Yeah, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure of that. You'll have to check that with Michael. Okay. It, so yes, it does <laughs> if anybody has anything relevant to why we're here. Go. I would like to make a correction to that statement. I have two properties in, in R5 right now that are currently licensed um, short-term rentals, and we absolutely have to apply, comply with every state regulation, which is Vermont Act 10 special session of last year. It, we have short-term, we, we have to uh, comply with all fire codes, all safety codes. We have to pay rooms and meals tax. That's 9% plus the 1% local option. It is currently the law of the state of Vermont that covers that. Right. Do you have a Woodstock permit? Yes. Short term rental permit? I do for the one that is currently required. These, my, my two that are in R5 do not currently require them. Right, exactly. And I am grandfathered. I am making a clarification. You made a statement, um, and by the way, Kat Gray, right, um, that, that we are not currently required to pay rooms and meals tax. No, I didn't, comply I didn't with, say with that. I codes. said that as part of the regulations, it requires people to do that. Whether you do or not, that you're taking that on as part of the permit. We're asking, we're requiring people to do that. So some short-term rental owners may not be doing that right now. But they are. But if they are, they are currently required by current right. law without any changes to our yes. zoning right. to, to comply. Okay, yes. you're next. Um, and then I we're we finished over here. These yeah. people are next. I would just challenge the need to have a three-month moratorium mm -hmm. yeah. because why can't you do it? You know, now as things are ongoing. Do you think a lot of people are going to set up new? Houses? I just don't understand it. It's happening. Yeah, maybe. The people from Killington who are doing short-term rentals are now coming to Woodstock and buying homes. Okay. And they're running, they're running corporations. They're running big businesses where they're buying places to do short-term rental. Yeah. We need to think of that as a community. Do I we want to be a bedroom community for short-term rentals, or do we want to be a community of people who live here? Could I How many houses are we talking about? I know, that's what I'm... <laughs> a lot. And I just don't see the Yeah, we have two realtors here that I think would like to speak. <laughs> okay, you're next. Okay, all I want to say is this is the most engaging select board meeting I've been at. <laughs> <laughs> Sally and I are both on the visioning committee, yes. on the steering committee for um, our future, our, our future. future. And we need you all to participate because these voices are really important. And, and the conflict is, is important because there's a lot of vision, a lot of stuff that this town has never grappled with. Um, and we've started this process hoping to get this kind of communication going. It's not appropriate right now to go delve into it, but we do have a forum for it and we do want to address these issues. Um, for those of you, you know I grew up here. I feel passionate about this building. I feel passionate about this town. So I encourage you, pay attention. There's cars downstairs. Too. There's cars yeah, downstairs. The fill them out. Um, survey online. Survey <laughs> online and get involved. Well, you guys are persistent, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got so one here. I'll tell you, I got two more, and that's it. We have well, you keep repeating people. Come back on the 27th. That's not a great turnout. Why are you here? I understand it's a great turnout, and I love your feedback. And you should do that. Very important, and it's no attempt to shut you out. So Mary Mayhew, uh, 4 North Street. Um, I just want to just bring one little fact. I think it's right. The biggest, one of the biggest tax revenues in the state of Vermont is Airbnb. So it's generating money for our state, and that tax money can be used for our state. So. I, you know, I, I, I'm very concerned that we're, you know, to, to think about doing a moratorium, I think, is absolutely crazy. Uh, I do want to hear, I do, let me finish, I do, I do feel that it has to have some regulation, which I already feel that we do have in place. As a real estate agent, I tell people who are buying properties to talk to Michael Brands, read the regulations, you have to get a permit, and they're, you know, this is what you have to do. I feel like right now we've got a pretty good system. Maybe what the problem is is we've not been able to maybe regulate it, but I think the people who do it, I think on the most part, are doing a good job. Then why um, does somebody close to the fire department? 
I'm just going to be real quick. Uh, my name is Rick Turwell. And when the question was asked, how many properties does this represent? I was looking at Sally and she said she doesn't know. Um, and there's a lot of compassionate discussion here. And my gut feel here is nothing should be passed tonight. This should actually fall into the discussion with the broader topics and collect. Well, I, if, if, you, if you do not pass this tonight and take no action, it will stay in effect. So once the Planning Commission voted on it, it is in effect. So you cannot take any action. If you vote it down, then we're back to having no permits in five acre and forestry, which means we still have no idea how many potential ones are out there and there will be no permitting for them. So, so because I, our vote tonight doesn't make any difference? It does. Well, if you vote it down, it does. But if we vote for if we vote for it, it makes no difference. If you well, you have a year because this is a public hearing, <coughs> and by the state statutes, you have a year to take action on it. So if you do nothing tonight, it stays in effect from the planning commission decision. I I have to tell you that my colleagues here are telling me this we're out of I'm out of order by let this so come back on the 27th and. We'll give you the opportunity to speak. Uh, I appreciate all your comments and uh, so I would propose that we don't adopt these until we have a fuller discussion. Mm -hmm. yes. So you're not turning it down at this point? Or you are. You have to you I you thought either, that, I thought you wanted us to adopt them or not adopt them. Right. But if you don't adopt them, then you're opening it up to having no permits on five acre forestry, which was a real concern of the Planning Commission, because again, we're losing any sort of any sort of understanding. So it's either of what's a going no on. vote or a supportive vote. Yeah. You, know, I mean, you can also not vote. I meant not vote, right? Yeah. I wouldn't shut it down. Well, that's the way it's been right along. So right. I mean, if, if they don't if vote, then it's going to stay. It's well, the same. except that. Except that as we're having this discussion, it's becoming more apparent that Woodstock is a great place to come in and put in a bed and breakfast right. without any regulations. Or a lot of people And I said bed and breakfast and it's short term rental, and that's not true. There are no requirements for short term rental. That's bad. Exactly. And it's just free season, and now it's a problem. Now it's a problem. Why don't you have to? Okay, I'm one. Promise me, one more. This lady here has been very patient. Oh, thank you, Barbara O'Connell. Um, as it relates to the whole zoning issue, having been on this side of the table where zoning has affected me in other ways, and I see now where this is going, I've been taking notes of everybody's comments, and not in any particular order. This appears to me to be very punitive to anybody who happens to own a home that they're trying to maintain and pay for. Um, not everybody can just own it and pay for it. Uh, there are taxes and there are maintenance. I personally have employed numerous people in this town to paint, mow, put in landscaping, clean houses. Um, I have employed a number of people who have worked for me simply because I own one or two properties that have been rented out in a short-term manner. So I feel like it, it has benefited many people in many ways. Not everybody can live in Woodstock, but those who work in Woodstock are being given employment. Now, the, the, the one term that bothers me is losing properties to short-term rentals. <laughs> I don't believe we're losing yeah. anything. I believe the town maintains itself, and everybody has to, they have to take what they have and hang on to it as best as they can. How many lots you have? Excuse me? How many homes are you doing short-term rental? One. Okay, but you just said two before. 
There are people at multiple homes. I have, doing it as a I have had. It's different if somebody is trying to campaign their home. I have had multiple homes. That's just been a little bit Okay, thank you very much for your time. I have had multiple homes. Please. I have also sold. She's not my homes. I have also sold them to people who have either continued to rent them or who have employed other people right. to maintain them, paint them, put in landscaping, put on roofs and so forth. I think the thing that is happening here is that everybody who owns a property is being punished unfairly as we're just simply trying to maintain what we have. And that again, I know it, it's laughable, it's laughable. No, it's I not, understand I'm sorry. That. But may, if I may interrupt you, it's yes. your point of view, and except many people have different points of view. Yes. So what we're suggesting is just putting a curb on the a moratorium means that for a couple of months you don't okay. issue any new permits. It doesn't mean that we don't have short term rentals. Okay, what we have let's let's we move the exemption or where do you well, where does the board want to go with this year? We have to move on. Why don't we postpone it for a Why don't we postpone it for a moment? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 And we'll keep working on it. We will, the board has just said we are going to postpone this for a month. I'm here to make a motion to either table it or not. Yeah. Right, so I'll propose a motion to postpone this action for at least for a month. I second. Motion has been made and seconded that we propose any action for at least a month. All those in favor on the board say aye. 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 Those posts, the eyes have it. We'll see you all back on the 27th. Public meeting. Public meeting on the 27th. Okay. Good All right, just as no. how much time would be allotted for, for the hearing on the 27th? That's solely for that meeting, right? That's all it is. That's all it is. Staff yeah. regular board meeting. And, and I think the intent is to have, not to have a discussion, but just to hear lots of different viewpoints. Okay, so. We'll be very long. Can I say one more thing on that? Yes. <laughs> it seems to me that we should probably have a put this to a community vote like a referendum because here we're hearing a lot of um, feedback from people who have Airbnb and want to participate in the Airbnb and there's a lot of other people who don't have you Airbnb so they're not showing up. So it does seem like... You can make that suggestion on the 27th. Um, yeah, part of the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you all Thank very you. much. Sorry I ran over, but when it turn out like this comes, I think it's only fair that you be heard. about the uh, uh, new truck, the extended warranty. And I think Ken has some other things. Yeah, shut the door, please. Yeah, Ken, if all your business, bring it forward for everything, and then we'll, so you can be released. Okay. Uh, come on up, Ken, to the, you get this, and, uh, On the F-550, when we put that out to bid, 
the is that this one? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, the bodybuilder didn't include labor in the bill. And when I called, I found that the dealer had only submitted the body build to one builder. So I pulled it back, sent it out, re- sent it out to bid again to three body builders. And the difference is on your paper, it, what it come back at, will, I think will be around 76? 75, 738. Versus around 71 where we were originally. So you still put it out to three people? Yes. And this is the lowest bid? Yes. Okay. I propose a motion to accept this bid. I second it. Motion has been made and seconded to accept the bid. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank so the, you. the next thing is your um, greater bid tabulation. Do you have that on your? Uh, I submitted it with the, the greater. greater bid. Uh, we had three turned in, one from deer, two from cat. Uh, the deer came in at 195750 which was considerably less than both the caterpillars. There's an option for 250 and a 500 serve done at our location, which would bring it to 196.9, and that was my recommendation. That's your recommendation? Yes. Okay. I That'll propose a motion to accept Ken's recommendation to buy the 2019 John Deere 772 Jeep. I second that motion. motion. I make a motion to accept the greater bid of one value six dollars. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded to accept that bid uh, for one ninety six nine. Any uh, further discussion? Does that include a trade in or anything? What are we yeah, that's net trade, and okay. we, it also includes a seven year full machine warranty. Any further discussion? Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 And you had one other thing that came out in that email this afternoon. The street sweeper. Oh, the street sweeper options I submitted to the. Oh, board. yeah. Yeah. He didn't bring that up. Do we have enough to pass out? Yeah, do we have enough of yes, those? Street, street sweeper. Uh, uh, option one. Would you, like me, would you like me to read them? Oh, boy. Thank you. I have a bunch of them. Yeah. 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 I listed uh, five options with pros and cons and other ideas for possible discussion. <coughs> Currently, we're starting at six. With the spring cleanup having been done, it, it seems to be working. We are missing spots where cars park and they vary uh, consistently from the bump out down to Mechanic Street, cars are parked there. I've heard no complaints about cleanliness of the streets. One of my guys heard a complaint from pedestrians. Why are you doing this at this time of day now? Apparently the noise bothered them when they were walking, but that is the only complaint that I have heard as far as what we're currently doing. When you say a loss of two hours production, what do you mean? By coming in at six instead of four, I'm losing. If he came in at four, he'd be done by seven, mm-hmm. and I got him for them two hours. But by coming in later, they're sweeping later. So when they come in at four, they weren't leaving at noon. They, you know, they worked the full day mm-hmm. on other things. So by coming in later, I'm losing that production of them doing something else. But won't we paying overtime for that time? Yes. Mm. So it's not really a loss. Yeah, no, you're still losing It's production, production, but not money. Uh, I said, money. That's why I said okay. production, yeah. Right. They could work later, couldn't they? If you they really did. wanted the production? It, they could, but that's different. It was... They regularly get off at 3.30, yes. and you're still trying to let them off at 3.30. Yes. <coughs> but that's what, 
as you see, <coughs> options, loss of production, that's what I'm referring to. Okay. Yes, yes. ma'am. What they can do. Would you like to read the option? No. I'd like to ask, is there an option that you'd like to try next? <laughs> no. Do you think you're working on the option already? No. Well, given that you can't start before six, <laughs> what, what's the best option? I'm not getting complaints, and, uh, and with spring cleaning done, I think continuing what we're doing. That's Sally has a question. Um, did you did you fix the sweeper at all? It just seems like it's not quite as loud as it was. What's the difference between when prior it was this spring before it ever went out? Right. I had a new impeller put in it. Okay. So yes and no to answer your question. Yes, it was fixed, but nothing has changed. <coughs> This year from when we first started it, with it. It just seems quieter now than it did when we first when we were doing it every day. So I don't know if it's the, it's the level of dirt or something. Is it because the streets are cleaner that it's less noisy? I don't know. It just, it's, not, it's not as obnoxious as it was. I don't know why. Yeah, I, or maybe it's just I'm used to it. That <laughs> works, yeah. Or maybe it's just not so um, Maybe there's leaves yeah. on the trees. That's true. Actually, that's a good point. Oh, that's because it came in. Uh, option number four sounds great. Well, what are you going to do that? Okay. Option four, would you say what it is? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so you have a parking ban with signage, so when the days when you're going to clean up that suite, you just have a temporary par uh, parking ban. And that way you can do that, that way you don't have to bother anybody during the... You have to have a permanent sign, just not temporary signs. Can you speak louder, Ray? I say you have to put a permanent sign, you're not temporary. Oh. Sign package. Something like street clean sweeping every Thursday. Right, exactly. Such such every time. other. We'll be towed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> How much does that cost? I, I have no idea. I, I would have to find out, you know, the cost of the signs. The problem, really, the biggest deterrent for number four is. <coughs> If I if we do the parking ban signage and people ignore it, when they come down through with the sweeper and someone's parked illegally, by the time we get it moved, you, it just why do you have to get it moved? Why you going to sweep? illegally. Same way you sweep now, you go random. Okay. In New York yeah. City, they get a big sticker. Yeah. That it takes a really hard time to get off, and they <laughs> slap it right on your windshield. The block is the school car fall in front of the sweep up and take the cars out of the way. Oh, that's not severe. I mean, it's hypothetical. You know that they're no, but I mean, the problem is that people are not going to move. But do we really want more signage in town? Well, do we want to resolve a problem that will? No, no, I, I understand, but I think right now it seems to be working. Right. At this point, I'm willing to do what. The six o'clock work board for board. you. The six o'clock going okay. It seems to be. And for Go Alex. What, why don't we hear from some of the people? Hi, Charlotte Hollingsworth. I have an inn in the village. Um, I will say I've, I've warned all the people, and of course I was expecting the jet engine sounds to come in, which are not now. Yeah, yeah. For some, I don't I understand you know why I got that. Maybe they fixed it. But um, so no one has seemed bothered um, at 6 a.m. yet anyway if it if the noise level keeps down of course I do like option four with the, the signs but if or <coughs> even starting at seven but just please don't go back to the four because all of us are going to be out of business because we'll have we'll have to, you have to refund everyone's money um, when they stay with you because they're wide awake at 4 a.m. I, I just wanted to ask Ken or, or members of the board, does it work with snow when you have the signage? Does the no. parking ban work? No. Um, okay. Every, every time we clean snow, I'm typically having cars towed, which is different 
than sweeping because cleaning up snow I can't just yeah, go yeah. around with cars. Right. But I I just would want at, to at different watch. times it's it can be one or two or I've had as many as eight toes. And it doesn't go well. No, I wouldn't imagine. <laughs> <No. laughs> Am I able to say something? Yes, you are. <coughs> I've just been interested mainly in this subject. And I've been in Woodstock for 50 something years. And um, I worked at Dartmouth Hitchcock, retired nurse. My husband was at the inn. And we lived on Pleasant Street until we retired. It was never a problem. And I think we had the Ardmore and the Charlestown and so forth and so on. And the businesses were always full, village um, and so forth. I'm just going to make a comment. I'm not in the village now. I'm not off of college here because we're retired and so forth. But um, for 50 years, I, I got to say, I was thankful <coughs> to see the snow plows. And, and all the guys in this specific department fix our sewers and just everything. And <coughs> looking at the greater good, I'm just amazed at the response. There's so many issues in the world, you know? And um, people came to Woodstock before and coming more now, especially with Mr. Rockefeller opening the inn and so forth. So those are my comments. But <coughs> And I've asked a few other people from uh, somebody who is a tr was a trustee, and she lives right on River Street, next to the wreck, and um, so forth and so on. So that's my comment. Thank you. You want? I wanted to ask, what's the fine for parking when the, when you're not supposed to? Well, you have to pay for the towing charge. Why don't you just increase that fine and significantly? And I think. Either you're going to have a big revenue source, <laughs> or you're going to get them to move and not do it again. I don't, I don't know. Sixty dollars now. Sixty dollars. Sixty for towing. The fine is sixty bucks plus the towing fee. Fine. Plus the, the fine is sixty plus the towing charge. Plus I think you have to pay the the guy for keeping it in his storage yard. Could uh, could somebody ask those people out there to? Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. Yes. Uh, I'd just like to point out that we've been trying to reduce the number of signs in the village quite a while. It's always a, it's always a problem. And uh, we, with the new, uh, there's a chance that some more signage will be coming in when uh, the road is repaved in 2021. And I, I would be against adding more signs up and down the street. Um, as a solution. I think option one is the best one on the plate for now. It seems like a good compromise. Um, you may make a motion, Mary. I'd like to make a motion that we accept option one. Start sweeping at 6 a.m. Seems to be working well. Um, I don't put cons or no. I'm saying one six, 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 six a.m. that I have it says it's four a.m. at the top. <laughs> it it says it says continue starting at six a.m. and sweep yeah. can be done. Thus far, the only complaints have been from pedestrians. Oh. The pros not waking people at oh, four a.m. Oh. Less overtime than when starting at four a.m. And this board likes that. Um, not sweeping where cars are parked has been four to eight locations consistently that can't be swept, with the bump out to Mechanic Street being one of those issues. Loss of two hours production in the day, and that's after the sweeping is done, between then and when the time that the men are finished <coughs> work for the day. And the traffic pedestrian interference remains a safety concern. And that is a con. Um, summer's here now. Children are going to school as much. Although the daycare facilities, there are two here, they're still very active in the summertime. And I know that in July, there's a program at the elementary school. But it seems to be the best option that is also acceptable to the people 
without putting a major handicap on the highway department. Yes. And that's my, mo I've made a motion. Motion's that's been made, and is there a second to that motion? A I'll second, second. is Sharon. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion from the board? We have a comment in the audience. Yeah, one comment. When I spoke with the person in charge in Montpelier, he said that when they do run into trouble <coughs> not being able <coughs> excuse me, to sweep, they um, go around it and then put cones in that spot the next week. Hmm. And he said that people tend not to. <laughs> Obviously, they can't park. And then they realize that they have to stop. Thank you. Did they go to the yeah. Thank you. Yes. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. I'd, I'd like to add to the motion yes. that we continue to monitor what's happening and see if there are better, uh, better things that we can add to the solution to make it even better. Yes. Yeah. Could I also add that? Accept that. Just remembering that for next year that we warn people when you start that intensive cleaning mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year so we know it's coming. Good idea. All right. I don't think we need any further action. Okay. We need Everybody. To vote. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 If, ayes have it. Um, I'm going to skip over that sewer permit application and bring it up down under the uh, board of sewer the commissioners. Sewer commissioners. So the next, you have one more thing on your agenda, Ken. I think, and I could be wrong, the alternate rep for the. Uh, oh yeah. J -C -C. Yep. Yep. And I ch and Phil checked on that. The alternate rep does not have to come from Woodstock. So we had talked about pointing Ken, and the question came up: Does it have to be a resident Woodstock? And the answer is no. So. So do we need to vote, or is it just okay? Just FYI. I think we should vote on it. Okay. So I'll vote to uh, recommend Ken as our alternate on the G U V S W M D. I'll second that motion. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Yeah, aye thank you, Ken. And Which, thank you. The lady doesn't quite know if she belongs here or not. Can you help her out a little bit, maybe? <laughs> thank you. I'm Florence Mahoney. Excuse me? My name is Florence Mahoney, and I was told to come here at 7 because um, of our barn renovation and a new sewer line. But I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Yeah, you're here. Okay. 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 You okay. Bring that on to, uh, to the uh, sewer commission, but we'll we'll take it up now, seeing how you were told to be here at 7. Well, I'm happy to wait. I just want to make sure yeah. I was right. Let's, uh, let's, let's bring that up right and now. Thank you. And the highway guys. Now. Couple uh, more things. Sometimes I wonder who's running this meeting. <laughs> no, we don't. Okay. You don't. Thank you. Not us. Yeah, right. Just check with this. Well, <laughs> so explain to us a little bit about what you're. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Miss Mahoney. You. Explain a little bit about it, please. Oh, so uh, we have uh, a very old, uh, big barn that was falling apart, and we decided to renovate it. Um, into mostly a rec space, um, but there will be a bathroom there, and there is a potential, uh, I suppose, in the future that someone could use it as somewhat of a living space. There's going to be um, a little kitchen, sink, microwave, and a bathroom. And there was already an existing sewer pipe under the drive uh, that was there before we uh, bought the house. And so now uh, we just want approval to hook up that uh, one toilet, shower, sink, little sink to that line. I don't anticipate it's going to add too much to <coughs> our... All right. I think the process is that um, you have to... Wastewater rules in the state of Vermont, and you, you have to have some other permit. <coughs> has to be, I, I may be wrong in this, I, it's a little bit out of my pay grade, but you, right there, you have to get from the, um, from uh, uh, <coughs> the water company that you can provide, uh, they can provide you the water, and then a letter from our town manager saying that you can, that the sewer department has the capacity to add. So I, um, Anybody, does anybody have any more? So do we need to approve this as is? I, I don't think we yeah. can.
account. We do. Think we do. We do. Uh, it's right here that she has paid the nine hundred dollar connection fee for this. It's been paid, and um, and the requirements by signing and accepting the application mm -hmm. here talks about the potable water and wastewater <coughs> with a yeah. okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's up to you. <coughs> We're in well, when we <laughs> prove it, we can't do wrong. Yeah, yeah. Right. right, right. Okay, yeah. Perhaps that could be a little bit helpful. But when we opened the restaurant, just went to Phil. Phil determined based upon bathrooms and square footage how much would be sent into the sewer treatment plant, and he either proved it or didn't. Yeah, I know. I'm okay with saying that with Abracadabra. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I'll propose a motion that we accept the application. Motion I'll second made. that motion. Motion's been made and seconded. We accept the application. the application. Any further discussion? No further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> okay. All right. You know what? Thank you. <laughs> Good luck on that. <laughs> it looks great. Let's come to church. Something long. It's not just that simple. Sorry. Okay. I may be wrong. So, moving right along. <coughs> I guess the Billings Park Commission is next. Oh. Member status. Well, there's lots <laughs> to update you on. Wait, did you skip um, the EDC? Well, we skipped it. Why? <laughs> because, skip? because, uh, <laughs> because Alice is more important. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, I'm very flexible, and I'm happy to be next. So, <laughs> so thanks. Uh, you have me down for uh, member status, and I'm happy to do that. Um, we have, uh, we had two resignations last year. Uh, that I had mentioned in our town report, and I, I had understood that letters of resignation had gone to Phil, but I guess they have not been received. So I've asked both Kathy <laughs> Avellino and Mark not. Weinstein yeah. to Phil's, send them again. Phil's Phil's just they saying they have not been, been yeah. not received. Thanks, Phil. Phil, it's lovely to have you there. Um, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, and uh, so I will have them send them again because I have correspondence with Mark in particular about it. so I. I know they were asked, and uh, we will get that those off because we have, excitingly, uh, we have two people who are very interested uh, in joining us, and uh, their letters of their their letters of interest and their uh, resumes have been sent to Phil Randy Richardson, uh, who works for the Upper Valley Trails Alliance, and uh, Julian Underwood, who uh, lives on part of Mount Peg. So Mount Peg draws us in to this work. Um, so they will be, so once I will get those hopefully off, and Beth, I've asked them to email you, uh, as we've spoken about. So if you don't get those in, you know, the end of next week, would you be kind enough to let me know? That's the letter that they're resigning? Yes. No. They, this, because they resigned a year ago, so I'm, that's a little. We can't appoint if we don't have to make it. Right. Place. I've let them know that. So I, I did that. But, so you have poised to go, two people who are very interested, um, and I know, that's a process too, and you need to uh, uh, let people know that those are open. Um, the other thing I would just like to update you briefly on a couple things because lots is going on, which is exciting. <coughs> and uh, we have lots going on in 2019. The first and biggest thing we're doing is a park management plan, which was inspired first by John Wigan and second by Butch Sutherland when we went to visit the Girl Scout cabin. And uh, we were put in, reminded that we hadn't done the park management plan, partly because it's expensive. But we, uh, we will have a draft. We've chosen a, a, a wonderful group that work with the National Park as well. And they're going to do an, a, a park management plan. Because my printer is broken, I have a copy of this for you so that you can take a peek at it at the scale of the work that they're going to be doing. It's the Red Start Forestry. Uh, ben Macon is just terrific and, and has done incredible work with the park. 
um, and they're going to be doing uh, forest inventory, habitat assessment, and recreational <laughs> inventory, and really looking at how the parks are used um, and how we can best manage their uh, use and their growth in, in the next several years. So that's pretty exciting for us to have, finally have a park management plan. Um, and the draft will be here by September, and then we will have present it to you, have a public presentation of it, if, um, which is exciting. We are also updating, it's been 10 years since we did the Mount Peg, when we started to do the nice kiosks and the trail signs that we, <coughs> that's almost actually 20 years old, but we're going to be updating the kiosk insert at the Mount Peg trailhead. We're also going to be uh, adding a new kiosk at the top of Mount Peg uh, on Woodstock, uh, on the Resort Corp uh, town border, which will help direct uh, mountain biking traffic and hiker traffic. So it, it, it'll be by the big uh, octagonal band, uh, octag octagonal picnic table, and we're also going to be replacing the big U bench so that the, the wonderful Eagle Scout project that Jordan Fields did many years ago has sadly uh, seen better days. So those are some of the things we're doing. Um, we continue discussions with Faulkner Trust. Uh, as you may remember, uh, we, as we were working on our Federal Lands Access Program grant, <coughs> we discovered that actually the town and Billings Park Commission, in fact, did not own most of the Faulkner Trail, which of course we thought we had. Um, Faulkner Trust has taken over ownership of that, and um, they would like to de-access uh, this property and we began the discussion in December Phil and Jill representing the town Rick uh, Kendall and Chris and Jennifer Waite representing the National Park uh, and uh, a couple of us representing the Billings Park Commission and of course the Faulkner Trust uh, and J JP Morgan were there and we began discussion of how that might how the town might be willing to accept a gift mm -hmm. of the park and the trail uh, again so it would be a taking over the trail again and a gift of the park. Um, I don't think they're in the land management business. They want out, and uh, but we also want to have the, uh, in, you know, the piece of the endowment that they that would generate enough income to manage more property and to manage that property. So we're working on those details. The conversations continue, and we will have more for you. Uh, I hope fairly soon. We've kept to the schedule of clearing the top of Mount Tom, so that now when you go up climb up Faulkner Trail or go through any other way from the National Park. The view has been restored, uh, our beautiful view from South Peak. So that is looking really lovely. And um, we are continuing the trail restoration of the, Faulkner, of the Faulkner Trail. As you know, to afford it, it's incredibly expensive to do this properly. We have cobbled together with the great help of the National Park, our Vermont Youth Conservation Court, uh, teams every year, our student conservation associations, and um, our wonderful historic renovation trail expert, uh, uh, Peter Jensen. So that will continue again this fall. Um, the Girl Scout Cabin, we're going to be pulling together a meeting in July to discuss the Girl Scout Cabin and its future. Um, it's closed up now. The National Park has actually sent us a proposal to, act, to see how the VYCC crew could use it for the summer, Vermont Youth Conservation Corps, for people who don't know VYCC. And they're proposing that they enter into an agreement, an MOU with the town. I sent, I forwarded that to uh, Butch and Jill and, and uh, Christina Martz and Rick, I know would love to talk with you about it, but that might be an exciting way for us to see if it's still, you know, what kind of use it would, it would have people in it so that it would be being used all summer. It would keep, uh, the vandals and uh, the ill users away and it would give us a notion another notion of how it might be used in the future so that is a proposal that you have to take a peek at the trek to taste was a huge sen big sensation again this year we had over 600 people uh, before trek to taste on national <coughs> trails day you know it's our way we showcase our, our trail system our 30 miles of trails uh, that are, you can access from the center of town from the green and so we use National Trails Day as our way to celebrate uh, our beautiful trails here. 
Um, <coughs> we had over 600 people, and we launched the day. Sally ran in it, oh, yeah. or walked, walked. Um, with the park run, and they are. We now are doing, you know, this park run yes. every Saturday morning at nine o'clock from the pony shed. And then the last thing is we're going to be doing trail stewardship uh, date that yet to be determined, but we will let the community know, and we would love to have everybody's help uh, uh, being good stewards of our trails later on this year. So that's sort of the update. We will get those letters of resignation so we can you can get the interviewing process of uh, two interested people, Randy Richardson and Julian. So what we actually need to do is once we get those letters of resignation, we need to put an advertisement out. Yep, so exactly. So soon you get that done, and then maybe we could do the interviews next month. That would be great. Okay. They're all that part's all set. So okay. I just need to get those from Kathy and Mark. So thank you for everything you're doing. And then, do you want some approval to use the Girl Scout cabin tonight? Because I think we can just <coughs> vote Have you all it? had a chance to look at it? No, it wasn't no. good. <laughs> because I, I only got it today again from, I had said I thought it was a, an exciting way for us to see how the Girl Scout cabin could be used. But there's a uh, time limit on it. So I think if we just talk about it, it will be sufficient for us to vote on it. Right, I, because of my printer problem, I'm afraid okay. I did not print it out. So the proposal is that the um, Vermont Youth Conservation Corps use the Girl Scout cabin for their <coughs> crew leaders to um, sleep in, basically, and they will actually do some improvements. They'll do a major clean, they'll be present there, um, and they'll they'll do any major repairs that are needed, like to fly screens and things like that. So it seems like a win-win solution for us for an empty building that will then have inhabitants in it. Last summer there were some concerns about who was sleeping there, and this would prevent that. Yeah. So I'd like to propose that we uh, allow them to do that. It, it would be, a, I think, a, a lovely partnership. Our partnerships with the National Park when they oversee projects of this scale have, have only been positive. So um, they bring a lot of oversight. Uh, and as you know, the BYCC crews are very well managed by team crew captains and by the leadership at BYCC. It's a terrific organization. How many people would be in it? Uh, they didn't specify how many. We could, we can, those are things we can find out. But my guess is no more than can sleep there. So my, I don't think they ever have a crew of more than 10. They have very strict standards for the facility really, and the guidelines, so I think they're probably, they're certainly going to keep it much better than we do now by not doing anything. I'll second your motion. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Good to use it. Okay. Um, Thank you. Will, will you respond, Christina, or would you like me to? How would you like to proceed? Beth will. Uh, yeah, okay. Tell Beth what you need and she'll do it. Um, what I, one question I have for you, about a year ago, we talked about the timber harvest. Yes. That and we, we asked for an update by February. For right. There, for we, that requires a plan, a park <coughs> plan, for and us to have a criteria upon which we would assess uh, whether we would do any more. Have you hired a forester to yep. give you a plan? That's part of this work, yes. Okay. Yeah. And when would you expect a... a Something on timber forest. Uh, that's timber a piece. Harvest. That's part of what the plan is is going to include. So we'll have that by September. By September. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, EDC, you are next. Well, actually, I don't really have anything. You have the oh. report that I sent in. Yeah. And um, as it states on here that there is there is no action required by the select board for any EDC items at this time unless Joe has something back there. Um, I, just, I can just give you an update of uh, how things are progressing with the revitalization committee, if you'd like to hear that. Benches. Uh, yes. Benches. But I was just going to finish Sally up here. Wasn't quite yeah. Finished, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I would just comment that you have a letter from the chair and vice chair about the moving forward and the new structuring of the EDC, which is not altogether that it different, but there are just some new committees coming up. So um, there is really no action for you to take on, and it's more informational for you. And so if you have any questions on the report, you know, go ahead. I wanted to say congratulations for getting part of Stay to Stay, whoever that yes. lies with. Yes, that was um, it's really exciting. Yeah. Beth and I had met with Wendy Knight back in February, probably, and, and sort of pushed it. And they're focusing on different types of outdoor mm -hmm. recreation, so this will be a mountain biking weekend. And may I just add, Stay to Stay has been a big success. 
Uh, as, as you know, I'm Vice Chair of Senate Economic Development, and we are very supportive of this. We, it's already landed. I believe we have, I mean, we have lots, a number of new residents as a result of this data say that was in Rutland. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are uh, hoping that uh, we will have the same positive and yes. productive outcome. Yes. Yes. So it's been terrific. Go to Joe. Joe? Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, I'm happy to announce, I'm sure you probably have noticed that the benches have arrived and uh, on the green and other places in the village. Um, the pots for the bump outs have been ordered. Uh, it's not clear when exactly when the delivery will come. We're just kind of looking into that. Um, when they do come, we're, we're going to uh, organize <coughs> the volunteer <coughs> committee to fill the pots, put the flowers in and distribute them uh, in accordance with what was agreed upon between uh, the committee and the police department. Um, then the next, well, let me first talk about uh, Teagle's Landing. Um, Jack Rossi, I'm sure you all know, is a local uh, landscape architect. He has assessed the situation um, and has come up with a plan that we're going to present to the EDC the next meeting, uh, which will call for new steps, removal and disposal of the old um, railroad tide steps, um, refurbishing below with some perennials. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a tree there, we, 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 that probably will be removed. Another one planted up closer to the sidewalk. The landing on the left-hand side is going to be uh, restructured uh, with maybe some different types of stones and stuff. And Ray is our expert on that on that factor, um, so that we won't need a lot of maintenance, but we'll be able to put some pots with flowers. And then one of the key yes. components is, <coughs> is the banners, is the railings, which are going to have to be custom made essentially because uh, you know they don't make these things in on moss. They kind of decide what has to be done where. The, um, and then there'll be granite <coughs> seats at, at the lower level. So uh, we're going to go to, we're going to present a grant to the, uh, Beth is getting together the grant and we're going to present it to the EDC at the next meeting on July 1st. Allison. So um, the Garden Club, as you know, managed it for a while. Yep. And um, I guess my question is who it's wonderful for Jack to do this work. It's a big gift. Uh, well, we who is going to manage it on an ongoing basis? Well, we hope the garden club will, will okay. participate with that. So we haven't, and, and one of the people who is on our subcommittee subcommittee is uh, Mary Lee Camp, who is in the garden club. Right. And uh, she has been very active in making decisions about what's going on there. Great. how the things should proceed, Great. I'm sure that she'll step up and... Great, and I'm a Garden Club member too. I'm happy to support our continuing, uh, go, going back and, yeah. and really working to, to um, maintain you it. You know, the way Jack has got it laid out, I don't think there's a whole lot of maintenance going to be required. Every plant mm. needs maintenance. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'll say it again, a whole lot of maintenance. Right, right. And the, the second question I have is, are you going to keep the picnic benches? The picnic benches, no. No. There's only one down there now, and we would like a smaller one or two small ones. Yeah, that would be nice because it's yeah. really nice. Like, People do take their lunch there. Like the ones that are on the green. Right. But we don't have any more. Huh? But we can I, always build more. I'll tell you a quick story, Allison. Five years before we moved to Woodstock, Sandy and I and Sam were still in a little car carrier, came to Woodstock for a visit. And had lunch there. We bought a chicken at George's, and we went down to Teagle's Landing and ate it down there. Five Thank years before that. we <laughs> No, I really appreciate that one. <laughs> oh, George, you too. It's economic <laughs> development and work. All right. Any, anything else for the economic uh, I have a question. Yeah, oh, it's usually no, but and the Not next, the next item on our agenda, as far as the revitalization uh, committee is concerned, is tackling the uh, trash and recycling bins and uh, we will be presenting options to the design review and the trustees get their input and then go from there. Thank yes, you. We look forward to having that next month. Please. Yes. 
Next Can month, you buy please. something. <laughs> <laughs> do our very best, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, and the, the, as far as the existing benches, um, I called Joel Carey at the rec center, and he was excited about the opportunity of having them to be used at Vail Field and possibly yeah, around the nice. tennis court and the pool. So uh, there is a home for them. Great. And thank you for leaving him on the green for um, <laughs> Alumni Day because it provided a lot of additional seating. You're certainly welcome. The new benches are beautiful. Yes, they are. We may need more. Who knows? But we I've heard a lot of compliments. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm glad, I'm, glad it's, I'm glad it's a good first step. Thank you, Joe. Right <laughs> thank you for your cooperation you over the weekend. Anything else? Nope. Anything else on board? Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to keep you waiting, but it was worth the wait. All right. The next is uh, the regional planning uh, amendments. I don't think we take any action on this. This is for your reading <coughs> pleasure only. Uh, and it just says that there will be uh, some, you, you can send in your comments and there will be some um, hearing dates. So. Thanks. We have a big book out. Yeah, there's, there's a. Beth's got a big book about that thick out there. If you want to look through it, it's. Uh, uh, the next is the letter intent to permissible road grants. Grant and a program. So I'd like to propose a motion that we accept the letter of intent to participate in the municipal roads grant in aid program. I'll second that motion. Motion's been made and seconded that we accept the letter of intent to participate in the municipal road grant uh, in a program. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So the next thing on the agenda is we I have. I think that we need to. We have to. Uh, yeah, Beth to probably. Date. Beth probably has something for us to sign. Oh, yes, I spoke. I can speak on that. Jo uh, today, or last Friday, Phil sent me an email saying 2020, okay. June 2020. That's what I thought. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so the next thing is uh, John has a truck permit. Yeah, I review them as they all look at all this. I'll make a motion to approve them. I'll second that motion. The motion's been made and seconded to approve <coughs> the uh, overweight, overweight truck permit. All in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Board of Sewer Commissioners, do we have anything on the Board of Sewer Commissioners? Discuss? Yeah, you took it up there. Yeah, we took it up there. Um, and uh, citizens' comments. Uh, we have the financial statements to take a look at. Yeah, so we'll take him. Are we ready to move to citizens' comments? Yes. You have something on this? Yes, yes, thank you very much. You are uh, I'm Dave Brown. I'm uh, Woodstock's delegate to the Eastern Fargo Governing Board. And I apologize to Beth for getting my uh, information in late. Next quarter I'll have it uh, uh, on time. Uh, but I did uh, want to give you a report, which you can read at your leisure. I'm just going to move through it very quickly um, to tell you that uh, things are, are really hopping. Uh, here in Woodstock, it's been a long haul, I know. Uh, one of the things we did is we decided to spend the money now to have the entire town designed. Mm -hmm. So rather than just doing piecemeal, we said we're going to do the next, do the whole thing so that's done. Uh, the underserved routes are currently being built. And here's a list, not necessarily comprehensive, but all the ones I can think of, where we currently have crews working, hanging fiber. So those are the underserved routes. Uh, and part of that uh, is, uh, is that contractors are now coming in to install some necessary hardware before we can start hooking up subscribers. On the served routes, the people I mostly hear from, um, that is people who already have something but hate it, um, uh, that's, uh, that's scheduled for, for next year, right? That's soon. Even how long we've well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, we started in 2008, right? So anyway. Uh, the infrastructure uh, for EC Fiber and Woodstock uh, is moving ahead. 
Uh, you may have noticed that the hub has been installed at the Woodstock uh, substation, the West Woodstock substation. Um, and there, from, from there, we're going to go over to the high school, pick up the service at the high school, hop the river, and then go down uh, Riverside Park uh, Road from there. Uh, Carlton Hill Road, excuse me. Right. So that pretty much covers Woodstock. It's happening after a very, very <laughs> long time. Thank you for your patience. Of uh, the district update, um, we have now over 3,500 paying customers. Uh, that's less than we had targeted. Uh, it's disappointing. We got a lot of uh, winter uh, construction delays, uh, but we hope to make it up this summer uh, and working extra hard. So we've, uh, we're uh, hiring additional installers and customer service reps to support that. Uh, financing, uh, we're, we're still very strong, positive EBITDA. And, uh, and uh, managing our expenditure, capital expenditures with our debt, uh, although we have, we're probably going to delay further uh, 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 loans till fourth quarter, just because we can't spend it fast enough right now. Uh, the legislature uh, did us a great favor uh, this year with House Bill 513 which in general is referred to as the broadband bill. Uh, it has a number of provisions which may not help us as much as the next guys. Uh, uh, and it, it uh, recognizes the things that EC Fiber has done. In fact, the state, the, the Commerce Department is now referring to EC Fiber as the model for the next thing, right? But what the, what the state did in this, in this bill is provide some funding, the thing we never had before. They provided funding to, to help the next group. You can get up to $4 million to get started uh, and uh, continuing funding for that. So that's all great stuff. Um, one thing I did not write down here uh, is that, the, to my knowledge, Allison left, uh, the governor has not signed the bill. And, and the, re the reason he gave is that he wants to have a celebration. And I said, I got a great place to have a celebration, mm -hmm. come to Woodstock. Now, I don't have the governor's cell phone number, maybe Allison does, uh, if anybody <laughs> knows, uh, to lobby the, lobby the governor, come on down here to Woodstock, let's have a big ribbon cutting and all that sort of stuff and celebrate the signing of this bill. It would be a great, great place to do it. So, in a nutshell, that's the status. Any Thank questions? You. I have a question that's not quite related to this. So I read something this week about a survey about whether towns want to take up the uh, supporting microcell yeah. service, which affects South Woodstock. Do you have a viewpoint on that? Um, my, uh, probably very few people hearing this know what a microcell is. It's a teeny tiny transmitter that sits on top of a telephone pole that provides cell phone service. There was a company called, uh, no, I'll forget <coughs> what the name of the company is, um, that was going to do that in conjunction with AT&T to provide cell service where there is none. So South Woodstock is just one place. Uh, they ran into trouble um, and uh, basically failed and now uh, they've been looking for a buyer. Very difficult to get a buyer because of the technology is now pretty much passed. Although part of this bill that we're talking about does provide some funding for a town which want, that wants to go ahead and pursue that on their own. So if Woodstock or any other town said, hey, yeah, we'd like to have microcells, um, you, can, you can get some help from the state to do that. Uh, my personal opinion, I'm not speaking for EC Fiber, personal opinion is proceed cautiously, right? right? It would be like uh, investing in, uh, in, uh, um, in old CDs or <laughs> at this point. That's a technology that's kind of Does going away quickly. Pardon? You may not need it soon. Yeah, well, I don't know that you may not need it soon. It's just that there are technological problems that weren't there before, and now they have to be overcome, and there's nobody around to overcome them. Right. AT&T is not interested in helping you out, so you got to get your own. But I'd be happy to talk to anybody about it in more detail. Thank you. I don't, I don't know that we have to make any decisions, no. but they talked about a survey. Yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's probably, I don't know where the survey is. I've heard about it. Uh, I, I think the Department of Commerce 
uh, basically now owns all this stuff. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Anything else from the board? Um, no. Um, this from the town of Reading. Right. Thanks, David. On the back is the um, yeah. ambulance contract. Has, um, has Phil seen this? Or did it come from Phil? No. Has David was, Green seen it? I'm not sure. If, I believe David was um, CC'd in this. Phil, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, and I'll say that it's a standard language for all the towns. Okay, so this is nothing new. Nothing new, right? This was written by Dave Green. Okay. The letter? The letter right. the, on the back. Okay. This agreement was written yeah. by, okay. by them. Okay. And this is a three-year contract. Yeah. Here you now. Yeah. So it's nothing new, right? It's correct. Yeah. So that language has been around <coughs> for a long time. Okay. All right. And have we changed our pricing? Have we changed the pricing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And this reflects the new pricing. Yeah. Essentially, we go up a little bit every year. We're afraid to go up too much because we don't want to give territory to Golden Cross. We already charge the Plymouth a lot more than Ludlow charges for the half of Plymouth that Ludlow covers. You've got Hartford looking at taking over Palm Frick. So it's not that. So we're afraid to get too aggressive on pricing. Understood. Understood. Ready. What, yeah. The other town. What? Who's the other town that serves Reading? The other town that serves Reading is uh, Plymouth, uh, Ludlow, or Hartford. Ludlow or, or Killington. Okay. Okay. Right. Sure. Okay. And Golden Cross, yeah. Yeah, Golden Cross. Okay. Said. All right. That's so, is it standard that we agree that to keep a fee for three years? Yes, it's, that's correct. Okay. okay. So, I propose a motion that we accept the three-year ambulance contract agreement with the town of Reading. I'll second that motion. The motion has been made and seconded. That we accept the agreement <coughs> with the town of Reading for three years. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We got two copies of signatures going well, here. I'm sure okay. that Beth has an original for us to yeah. sign. Any, anyway. any thing further uh, for this meeting? We have just. Yeah. Phil, do you have any words of wisdom for us? Uh, anything you'd like to bring up tonight? No. No. Thank you. Okay. I'll set. All right. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you, you soon. Put, you guys swept through a tough agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. All right, we have minutes. Okay. Yeah. Go approve. All right. All right. I'm going to sign off now. All right. Good have night. Good, Thank good you. Night. Right. Have, have a good night, Phil. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Thanks. Bye. I just have a question. It doesn't have to be part of the meeting, but are the EPC meetings open to the public? Yes. And are where are they? No, I know they're here, but where are they announced besides the website? Are they in the paper? Or? I think that they are regularly scheduled mm -hmm. for the first Thursday in the month. Okay. And that is noted on our website. The Economic Development Commission has a page of their own oh, okay. through the town of Woodstock.org, and it says right okay. on the where our boards are in meetings, EDC is listed there. Um, however, next the meeting next for July 4th has been moved to July 1st because the 4th is the Thursday and that's a holiday. And what time is it? 7 o'clock. And they're pretty good about getting out of here in two hours. They allow two hours for their meeting and they're really pretty good about that. 
and they publish all their documents on the website before. So if somebody had a question about <coughs> something that they've done or just don't understand it, that would be a good time to ask at that meeting. This <coughs> comment generally the first right right at the, right at the very the beginning. beginning. Okay. Board members. We're looking at minutes right now. Yeah, we're looking at the minutes. Yeah. And we have June 4th, the joint meeting. We have. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Two diamonded papers. Yeah. Right. No, no, it's fine. It's actually easy to read. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. 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 So I'd like to approve the minutes for June 4th. This the, uh, which which one? The joint meeting yeah, yeah. at 8:15 a.m. A motion to approve the um, minutes of the select board meeting on that same day, following the joint meeting. Okay, motion's been made and seconded that we appoint, that we approve the joint meeting and the regular meeting for um, June 4th. I have a change to the uh, regular meeting one. Okay. Um, to change the word on line 52 from agreed to suggested. I would come um, to work. I work. think that. So we did not agree that the East End Park would be a good place. Certain people suggested that it could be a good place. We, I think we agreed that it could be a good place, but no, no. we didn't agree. Some people thought it could be, but some, not all of us did. And it, it actually was me who made that suggestion, but right. that's irrelevant. So it's fine that some people suggested it, but to say that agreed suggests that we all actually agreed, and I didn't. We didn't have a vote on it. No, we, we didn't, didn't vote on it or anything. I think. It's very appropriate that we change that to suggested. So with that amendment, I do you need a second that? No. Um, I'm good. I'll accept your amendment. Okay. Everybody good? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Anything else? We, um, no, we have the warrants to sign, and yeah. they'll be set up for us. And we have the financial statement in front of oh, us yes, to review. I just buried that, mm -hmm. but I had it here a minute ago. I know two darn many things. I just had it. I know. You're welcome. What to do you mine. need? Yeah. I buried my financial statement. Oh, I, and it was oh, right here. I have an extra. Oh, thank you. Thought I do have an extra. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So for our next meeting, or for one of our meetings, I'd like an explanation of the, um, the costs that are going in under select board contingency. Make note of that, Beth. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so select board contingency, you want to know a breakdown of what's yes, in there? Yes, Where the expenditures are, that's easy enough to provide to you. You can have that in a couple of days. Yeah, maybe you could, we don't even have to wait for a meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll I will have a, uh, what's that, Jill? Maybe we don't even have to wait for a yeah, meeting. Yeah, I will ask them to Thank you. get that for you, for all of us. I know we have this. And then the only other thing that was way over budget was the emergency services building. Do we know what that extra 20000 was for? Do you remember when the heater broke in the middle of winter? And right. On a Friday? That was the boilers, yeah. Uh, while we're talking about the emergency services, in case you hear any rumors that Engine 2 was totaled on Friday night in an accident, 
that's not a true statement. They did have a little, they uh, were going to a fire at the trailer park and going across the bridge by the bed tanks, they clipped the bridge and did some damage to the rear. Um, it's a very tricky turn getting off that bridge. Did they damage and, the bridge? And David is taking care of it. He has uh, submitted the insurance papers to the League of Cities and Towns and it's to an insurance company it's being taken care of. And, um, but uh, he just warned me that he heard in a day or two that the engine was totaled <laughs> in an accident, so. That's a great rumor mill, yeah. <laughs> um, I just think that this looks much better than it did last month. It does that actually, it's balanced it does, together. Yes. Uh, so it yeah, looks so like the course. finances will come in to budget, do we believe that? In terms of percentages? You know, normally they balance out. Pretty uh, close. This has been, a tough year, but I don't think it's been any different than where I mean we've had some unexpected. Stuff, it would be nice to have a forecast for the next yeah, month, yeah. just to make sure. Well, it takes uh, bookkeeping now that we're ending the year, July or June 30th, to get all of the stuff together. I would say that it would be tough to have anything by July 15th. But a, but a forecast should be um, possible. I'll ask. Knowing what your big expenditures are. I'll ask. Okay, so um, pending review and approval of the expense warrants, I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mary. I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. You sound much better today. I do, don't I? Um, I sit in bed all day just for this. So I